Hi, I'm Heather Ballantyne. I'm an artist, pinup model, and super luxe entrepreneur. And this is my story. I'm Heather Ballantyne. I'm a super luxe entrepreneur, and I'm crushing it. So it all started in Alma, Arkansas. Uh, you probably never heard of it. It's literally the spinach capital of the world. And there was nothing to do. But uh, I was very close to my parents and my father is a military man. Um, he was very strict. So we had to be up really early, my brother and I. I had to get up, I had to do chores. There was always stuff to be done, you know, shovel the horse stalls, feed the animals, whatever, before school. And at the time, it was tough. It was like, what? This isn't fun. But the older I got, I realized that that uh, really instilled an awesome work ethic in me. So I'm so grateful for my dad for making us do that when we were young. And it really set me up for the rest of my life. So in high school, it was tough. You know, I was still doing the farm chores, and sometimes I wouldn't have time to shower before going, and people made fun of me. You know, I was the farm girl. I wasn't really this glam girl that I became later. And, um, you know, I, I got other interests as I, as I started to grow up. I, I um, started to notice cars and I got into fashion and makeup and modeling. And I ended up getting some really cool opportunities. Um, Catalina Swimwear, for, for instance, they wanted me to do runways. So I got to go to Dallas, to the World Trade Center and do some runway modeling. I also got um, to do some print campaigns. So it really started to open up my eyes that there was a whole nother world out there that I didn't even know about. I mean, I grew up in such a small town and it, it gave me even a bigger hunger and drive to discover what else was out there and what I could accomplish. So I was really excited about what was to come and I just wanted to move to LA. I was like, get me out of here. But my parents were very adamant that I go to university. And I wasn't really sure what to study. Uh, I was. I was kind of a late bloomer, you know, I didn't really arrive on the planet until later. So I thought, well, what am I gonna study? They're forcing me to go to university, you know, I don't know what to do, um, but I loved music. I loved theater and performing, acting. So I thought, all right, I'll major in musical theater. Uh, looking back, was it the most uh, logical degree? No, what do you do with a degree in musical theater? But it was amazing. I had great experiences, I met great people, I really grew up and it taught me a lot. So after graduating from university, my parents were really proud. It was exciting. I was the first Ballantine to ever have a university education. But I wanted something more. You know, I didn't want to just move back home. And I remember telling my dad, I think I'm gonna move to LA. And he's like, what? Why would you move to LA? You don't know anyone. How are you gonna support yourself? I mean, he was really worried, right? And I said, I'm gonna get a job. So I packed up a U-Haul. I had all my stuff in the back. I had my cat and we took off. So when I got to LA, I slept in my U-Haul for a couple days till I could find an apartment. And this was early on. There wasn't like jobs all over the internet. I was literally looking in the newspaper. And I saw an ad that said, hiring cocktail waitress for the Hollywood Palladium. And I thought, oh, that'll be a nice job. That'll be very glamorous. I'll get to meet a lot of people, I'll get to network. Never occurred to me that there were hundreds of other people seeing that ad at the same time. Came the morning of the interview and I, I showed up, I, I chose a red cocktail dress. And I showed up and there was literally like 500 people lined up. I, I couldn't believe it, I was overwhelmed. I was like, oh my God. And they were all wearing white shirts and black pants. And then there was me in a red cocktail dress and five inch black heels. And I almost turned around and went back. I thought, oh man, like, <laughs> one of these things is not like the other. But thank God I stayed because this guy in a three-piece black suit walked out and he had us all line up and he scanned the line, literally like 500 people. And he pointed to me and he said, you, come with me. Long story short, I started that night. And it wasn't even three weeks and the offspring was in there and they had a buddy with them. <clears throat> and he said, you know, what else do you wanna do? 
I said, well, actually, I'm a singer-songwriter. And he said, do you happen to have a demo? And I was like, yeah. So I gave it to him, thinking nothing of it, kept on with my work. And about a week later, he called me and he said, you know what? You should be fronting a rock band. I had never done rock music. I grew up in Arkansas. We did country and bluegrass and blues. But I said, sure, why not? And that's when the hustle started. There was this booking agent in Nashville that booked military tours, USO, DOD, AFE, and they were all over the world. And they loved female fronted bands because the majority of the people on the base were men. So it was a great break for us. We started getting booked and we tour 17 countries. I got to go all over the world. But it wasn't always glamorous, trust me. There were times when we had 19 flights in 21 days and every night we were performing and then we had a three hour meet and greet after and then we had to get to the airport to fly to a new city and start all over. But it was funny, we didn't have a lot of money, so I was the lead singer, but I was also having to road manage. And I was in a band with four guys, young guys who liked to party, who liked to be out all night, who liked to chase tail. And it was a lot of work because not only was I managing our schedule and getting everybody where they needed to be on time, you know, and perform and yada yada, it was like I was also trying to keep track of them. I felt like I had children, you know, and I was basically a child myself. So my band really was doing well. We had like um, some great, great things happening. But then after four or five years, things started to slow down and the guys started to get older. They started to get into relationships and it was just really hard to keep it going. And the industry was changing as well. There wasn't as much money or bookings for independent bands. So I decided to go on my own and do solo music and also do acting. I loved acting. I hadn't done it since, you know, theater and university. So I started auditioning. I was very fortunate. I started booking commercials. I got a role on General Hospital. I did some Lifetime movies. It was great. And I started revisiting my roots. You know, I always loved vintage and retro fashion. And my mom, who I'm very close with, she was named after Marilyn Monroe, the ultimate pinup. And I loved pinup. So I started embracing that again and bringing back, you know, my modeling, my acting. I got really involved in it. And I started working as a pinup model. I met some really great people, Laura Burns with uh, Pinup Girl Clothing. I started to get involved in that community and it just sort of inspired um, a lot of opportunity for me at the time. So it was funny, I was really involved in my solo music career, my acting, my pinup modeling, and I was not looking for anything else. And then came a guy, I met a guy, and he happened to be Canadian. And he talked me into moving to Canada, which I did, because I'm a risk taker. But when I got to Canada, everything was different. It was like, oh man, uh, there's not so much acting. There's not so much music. Like I needed a real job. And it was pretty scary because I hadn't had a real job in a decade. And I really wasn't sure what else I wanted to do. And I started to dig really deep and think, what else do I like? And I always loved cars. So I was looking on the internet after moving to Toronto and I saw that Tesla Motors was hiring. So I applied and within 24 hours, I had an interview. So I was so excited because I had lived in California previously and I was, I was very interested in what Elon Musk was doing with his company. I thought the product was really cool. So I had a, a series of interviews and I ended up getting hired and it was for sales. It was a new location and there was a counter at the door. So we literally had like 8,000 people sometimes in a day. And there was only nine salespeople to start. And we were answering the same questions all day long. We were standing for like 12 and 14 hours on concrete floors. It was really tough work conditions. But we loved the company and we loved the products, so we didn't mind. And I stuck it out and ended up meeting someone who knew someone else who helped me get my dream job. And it ended up being a series of interviews with a company called Grand Touring Automobiles. 
I met with HR, then I met with the GM, and he was very nice. He said, look, we can start you off with like Jaglan Rover. And I said, you know what? Nah, it's not really for me. Like, I'm not a mom, I'm not, you know, I need something more exotic. I need something more eccentric that suits my personality. And he said, well, they're opening a Lamborghini store in Vaughan, but you'll be surrounded by Italians and you're gonna have a really hot-headed Italian boss. And I said, perfect, that's right up my alley. He's like, really? I said, yeah, bring it on. That's, that's so Heather. So fortunately, he got me an interview with that hothead Italian, and we ended up hitting it off. He gave me a shot, and now I have my dream job as a super luxe sales entrepreneur for Lamborghini Uptown Toronto. So now that I have this amazing job, um, it's really interesting because my clients are the top 1%. You know, they're athletes, they're rock stars, they're CEOs, they're entrepreneurs. And it's so amazing because I get to interact with them on a daily basis and um, build those relationships and network and learn. You know, they have, they have so many interesting stories. So I feel so grateful and blessed to have this job, not only because I love the cars, but I, I really love the clients. So thanks for listening to my story and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be sharing my secrets, my tips, and all my advice to help you become exactly the person you want to be.